Hello my lovely witches. We have another Book of Shadows flip through today. Book of Shadows 19. Goodness me. Now I've heard a few of you sort of say, oh my goodness, how do you have so many books? And I do seem to be going through them a lot more quickly lately. You may have noticed. There is a reason for that. You can already see. You know the reason. You know you, you guys see how chonk chonk I make all of my books. So because I make my own junk journals to work in, I have started making them with far fewer pages so that when they get chonky, they don't get quite so insane. Particularly as, I mean, I don't mind the, the alligator mouth-ness of, of the books, but when you start to get towards the back of a book that's getting really, really, really fat, it gets much harder to work in. So I have made that decision to make my books have less pages. Um, so I will go through them a lot more quickly. I mean, I used to take a year to go through a, a, a grimoire or a book of shadows, sometimes longer, um, especially in the early days, much longer because I didn't work in multiple books so much. Uh, I tended just to work in the one book, but as you, we all know, our practices evolve and change. And um, I used to make a lot more art, what I would call real art or art outside of magic. And I don't do that anywhere near as much. So my creative flow tends to go into more of my magical projects. And so I do a lot more, you know, a lot more, just a lot more art magic. So I, I'm working through my books a lot more quickly for both of those reasons. I think I'm waffling again. Let's just get headed into this book. So on the front, this is actually from a colouring page um, that I bought. You may have seen it on my Instagram when I was having a really bad week and a friend of mine said to me, uh, nurture your inner child. And I took it very literally and I went out and I bought um, some colouring books and fun crafty bits and pieces and I did nurture my inner child and I did a little bit of colouring in. So this is an old repro map that I've covered the cover of the book in as well. My usual little wooden um, things to put my number in. This Waterhouse print which I love. Um, we're all very familiar with that, I'm sure. So as you can see, this was really only, it was actually only two months. It says to May, but I think I finished it pretty much on the 1st of May. So um, it was it was really only a two monther. This I had tucked into the front of my last one and I will probably move it through into the pocket in my current one, the one I've just started. Um, but it's just my Sabbath dates. This uh, Oat Calendula Itch Relief Soak is a really, really great recipe. I don't know the magazine that this came from. This was sent to me by a friend in a sort of art witching stash, D-stash swap. Um, and I decided to try out the recipe and it's great. I, I have problems with itchy skin from time to time particularly in the warmer weather um, and it's been been very helpful uh, days of the week correspondences I am starting to get interested in utilizing the days of the week for particular things something I used to do a bit more at the beginning of my practice and then I sort of got a bit you know I may lazy witch with it, I guess. I think that's probably the reality. Lazy witch can't be asked deciding to do spells on particular days or moon phases or whatever. Um, but I think I do this a bit more now with, gosh, I've just realized how dirty my nails are. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I have been crafting that it's not dirt. It's actually paint. Um, so yeah, tangent. I find I do this more with my sort of incorporating magic into my daily life. Um, just It's just nice to be a little bit more aware of the sort of 
correspondences or energies of a particular day of the week. So, for example, a Friday, I might make sure I have a slightly more luxurious bath with some bath salts and candles or, you know, maybe on a Wednesday I can think, okay, well, this is a, a day for communication. So this is the day to approach my boss with an idea or to write down a new spell or um, call a friend, touch base with a friend. Um, Mondays being psychic development, maybe that's a day that I say, okay, today I'm going to throw some runes or do a little bit more of a taro spread. Um, or I might, maybe I will just, you know, write down my dreams if I remember them, that sort of thing. So I'm getting really interested in that again. And I'm also starting to get very interested in the planets in planetary magic which obviously has an association with the days of the week um my color correspondences for the days of the week are all over the shop i've spoken i think before about the fact that i have a i don't want to say disorder because it's not a disorder it's neurodivergence i suppose i have synesthesia um, which if you don't know about it, look it up. It's very interesting, but it does mean that I almost confuse my, um, senses. So I will experience something with more than one sense. And what I mean by that is, is this is an example. Days of the week have always, since I was a very, very small child, they have had a color associated with them. Monday is red. Now, in traditional colour correspondences for days of the week, I believe Monday is white to go with the moon, um, but it's not, it's red. <laughs> so anyway, I have, th these are sort of more my colour correspondences. Uh, Saturday and Sunday for me are actually um, white and black, but I've done them in brown here because I didn't want to do white and black on this page. Uh, Friday is the only one that seems to correspond properly with everyone else's days um, and it is green and has always been green in my mind and its traditional colour correspondence is also green. So there we go. Um, I waffled a lot about one very tiny page. Moving on, this was the March Harvest Moon colouring page that I have been doing every month and adding to my book. This was some information I was reading and learning about centaurs, exploring that mythical creature, um, including this bit from a oh. an old magazine. Some beautiful illustrations of centaurs. So, I mean, as you can see, not all of my pages in my book are sort of just art or spells. Um, sometimes it's just a bit of research. This was quite lengthy research, quite detailed that I've written up in here. And I don't always write that much. You know, I'm not a massive writing witch, but I do do like to write up topics in my in my book. Oh, the sun has gone out. I hope this video is still filming okay i might turn a light on so sorry if the camera wobbles while i do this that's better now we can see a bit better we are very deeply into the middle of autumn at the moment and it started out sunny this morning and it is gray with black clouds looming on the horizon and they have forecast not just rain but hail as well so that'll be fun um, this is a page about working with the sun and I've actually used, these are, um, from Art Witch Academy. They were something that Emily did in Art Witch Academy, uh, and I've added them to this drawing that I did, another little artwork I did, prints that I've made from stamps, etc. It's a very solar, solar page. 
This one you might have seen on Instagram. This was for Grimoire 52. It was a prompt um, about metamorphosis, which I sort of felt went with the whole caterpillar and butterfly and tadpoles and frogs, toads, what have you. Um, so that was an exploration of uh, change and metamorphosis. This is another little researchy page on trolls. And I, I loved this so much that I didn't want to fully cover it up. So I decided to just lay uh, a piece of gold vellum over the top and be able to flip it up and have a look at it. Um, this was some something that I, I think I might have seen on Instagram, I'm not sure, it might have been from a book, but it was sort of the winter apothecary and what we might add. Yes, thank you, Nefertiti. I didn't need your assistance in talking. Um, she's sitting next to me on the sofa as I'm flipping through with you and she thinks the film should be all about her. She's got very strong opinions. Um, anyway, so Winter Apothecary, as I said, we're heading towards that time of year. And this is a bit of an, uh, a sort of a list of things that you can keep in your Winter Apothecary to um, stave off the worst of the winter bugs, colds and stuff. A little bit of information on the High Priestess because I was going through my stash of ephemera. And this is an old Picasso artwork that gave me massive High Priestess vibes. I was like, ooh, this looks like the High Priestess. Um, so I thought, well, I would utilize that as a jumping off point to explore the High Priestess a bit more. Again, this is one you might've seen on Insta. This was for Grimoire 52 and it was activist witchcraft and I just reutilized um, my fuck the patriarchy uh, sigil. Oops, I'm not supposed to swear in my videos anymore. Um, I will probably get into trouble for that. But anyway, that's what it says. Um, and this, this again, this was a beautiful image sent to me by um, a friend. And I just sort of felt that these, these little guys were looking a bit like lecherous men, um, ogling the beautiful women. So that felt like it fitted. I've given them some um, thought bubbles, what they might be thinking of these guys. This was the booklet from my Muses of Mystery Mabon box. I've just tucked that in there with some pretty papers. How to make your own watercolours, which I have tried. And in fact, this little piece at the bottom is done with my watercolours. I'm yet to fully perfect it. I didn't have any ox gall, um, so I made this recipe without, and I've seen many recipes not utilising ox gall. Um, but I have learned that that is what helps it to flow um, and sort of sink into the paper. So... I may well be getting myself some of that in the future because making your own watercolours is fun. This was my uh, winter salt bowl spell that I did, which I didn't create the spell. This is from um, Instagram, Born of the Stars and Moon, and they did a lovely little salt bowl uh, to absorb negative energies, and I loved the whole idea of it. And I had all of the ingredients that ingredients I love, things that feel very wintry to me and also are very good for that purification cleansing purpose. So and, you know, what embodies a wintry feel more than a polar bear standing on an iceberg? I can't think of much. <laughs> so there we have it. All right, and this, this is some of my favourite washi tape currently. I have, I don't know if you're familiar with the Studio Ghibli films. If you know, you know. And this is Gigi um, from um, 
Kiki's delivery service, which is a very cute cartoon about a witch and a black cat. So if you have, if you're not familiar and you haven't seen seen it, it's from the 80s. It's Japanese. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I recently bought a whole bunch of stationery related to Studio Ghibli films. <coughs> Excuse me. And utilising it at every op opportunity. <laughs> Another one that I shared on Instagram for Grimoire 52 is The Cycle Begins and... I chose to make some more sort of bunting, um, moon phase bunting in here with this very sort of celestial spread. So that was fun. But you can see how it really chunks up my book. Uh, this was some woodland creature magic and I made some little flip ups with the information about these animals and what they do or what they represent. So very simple, just utilizing some little imagery, some cards from, um, I think it was actually a Stamperia paper pack, most of these. This wasn't, this was sent to me by a friend. And some watercolour paper, some washi tape, and a little foresty image behind. This was my Maybon page. Um, this looks like it has parted company from up here. It's, it got it gets a bit squished when I let things escape from the borders of the book. So anyway, that's okay. This was a little bit about what I did that day. And then I'm not going to show you exactly, but underneath here on the flaps are my parts of my ritual that I do every year about sort of giving thanks and about spiritual plans and, and things for the following 12 months, um, which obviously is personal. But I thought this was fun. I had spent the day carving out leaf shaped stamps for that very autumnal equinox feel. Uh, this was, I made a little zine, a little zine about relaxing, relaxation. Just almost as a reminder to myself when I'm having a hard time to think about some of these concepts and put them into practice, maybe do some magic with them. And that just slots into this little pocket. April moon colouring in page. And this, yes, this Next set of pages is what I would describe as a collaboration with the lovely Emily from Fern and Oak Art, and I will link her channel um, to this video. Uh, I've spoken about the wonderful Emily before. She is an incredible art witch. She's not just an art witch, she's a witch, but she does a lot of art magic. Um, and we did a bit of a D-stash, studio D-stash uh, art magic swap together. And she included some pages that she'd painted on uh, that were clearly taken out of a, a journal or a book. Um, and I, they were uh, they're just beautiful. So I just added to them. Um, it's sort of hard now to describe which bits are mine and which bits are hers. But definitely the following four wider flip out pages are a collaboration between herself and myself. Um, so this was just a little bit of unicorn nature inspiration. Uh, this lovely poem. This page, I didn't do anything to except for stamp the 
title and add the text. This is completely her work. I think I added this down the centre to um, keep it together. It was a beautiful, beautiful painting and made me immediately think of Ellen of the Ways. I don't know if Emily uh, was painting a portrait of that goddess or not. Doesn't matter. Um, that's how I interpreted it. And so I wrote a little bit of information about her. One of my favourite goddesses. I often work with her in conjunction with Kernanos. I feel like they pair nicely together. Um, so that's that's in there and it's gorgeous. And then this one, which had this winged fairy slash angel. I went with fairy um, and did a little spray, sp spray, page spread. Blah. Words are hard. About the fae and... Uh, working with them or, or giving them offerings at Samhain to appease them. Apparently, they need appeasing at Samhain. <laughs> anyway, beautiful. This was from some purchases that I had made. Often when I make witchy purchases, I like to add the labels and tags and, and stuff into my book as a sort of a memory. Um, this was my comfy cozy witchy page because <laughs> how comfy and cozy does that look? And here's the witchy. Um, again that was a piece I think sent to me from Emily. You'll see a lot of them in this book because I just received the package and I was just tearing into all this amazing goodness and saying oh I can use that and I can use that and I can use that. It was very exciting. Uh, a little bit of info about Amanita muscaria and this is a little zine about mushrooms made by the wonderful Ruby from Dotty Delightful. Um, I love her, her zines and she's got this very fun, fresh approach to life that I, I just love. I love watching her just sort of travel through her day with this amazing, fresh, almost, I don't want to say childlike, but the inner child comes out very much in, in who she is and... She's just all about art, magic. She's all about wild nature, and and I love it. I love I love what she does. So that inspired me to do this painting of Amanita Muscaria and write a little bit about it. Um, obviously, there's a lot more information about mushrooms in the little zine, and yes, mushrooms are still a bit of an obsession of mine at the moment. And then we have my Samhain box from Muses of Mystery tucked in here. That's quite tight. In fact, it was so tight I had to tape it down because it kept popping open. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and that was my day, my Samhain day and what I did. Oh, we've got a glued down page. Are we surprised? It's an Alexandra book. And pages are glued together because she has no patience. This is going to rip everything. It's very firmly glued down. Oh, well. Never mind. That happens. It's going to probably... Oh, my God. It's really stuck. Ugh. Oh, well. Never mind. Um, oh, look how much glue had seeped out. Wow. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, guys, don't do not do what I do. Don't close your books when you've just glued things down because glue seeps out and glues your pages together. So this was an Autumn Sovereignty bath salt recipe that I created. Um, I love to use bath salts for magic. Um, I think it's a really wonderful way of incorporating magic into the everyday 
and it smells heavenly and feels wonderful and it's all about self-care as well um and then you can also do an art spread about them so it's a win 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 um so yes as i said experiencing autumn this is actually a picture from a calendar of um sort of my local area not far away like this is the adelaide hills um which i am sort of just at the foot of where i live and um this is the the adelaide hills area in autumn lots of really beautiful european trees in the adelaide hills so uh it's the right climate for them because it's a bit cooler than the plains and um, in autumn, it is just a, a breathtaking space to visit. Um, and this was about sovereignty and about um, taking ownership of one's world. It is a shame I have completely destroyed it by gluing my pages together, um, especially with this cute little kitty cat who now is just glue. Uh, so anyway, that's okay. It, it happens. I am not going to stress about it. We'll just turn the page. And this one, um, you probably have already seen in process. This is one that we did together in a video. Um, my very first Grimoire With Me video. So check that one out. Uh, it only went up a little while ago. Um, and this was me doing a little bit of magic uh, to assist with um, my pay review. And I will tell you, I did get a pay rise. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, maybe it wasn't quite as big as I would have liked, but you know, let's not complain. The spell worked. I was rewarded for what I do um, and clearly valued. So that's great. So that's that little art magic spell. Um, this uh, this is an anti-anxiety spray recipe, which I have written on the back of this card, upside down apparently. <laughs> I didn't realise that. Um, this was a piece of Molly Roberts ephemera from the Snail Mail Tear uh, Patreon. So it's sort of got a very self-care feel to it, this little uh, affirmation. And so I thought it was the right thing to put my anti-anxiety spray recipe onto. And I've just tucked that into a little belly band. I don't use belly bands very often because I find they are not very effective and things fall out of them quite easily. But I have found if they're a little bit shorter and smaller, um, you get a bit more, it's a bit tighter. And so things don't fall out as easily. Uh, so, little tip for me moving forward, make my belly bands small. More bits and pieces from something that I had purchased. Um, here we go, planetary influences. I said I was getting into planetary influences in my, my, my magic and exploring them. Um, this is a little bit about the planets in astrology and how they affect one's uh, self, I suppose, both personality traits and maybe what's happening, you know, the energies that, that they are affecting uh, at any time when they're doing all their crazy stuff. So that is something that I, I want to expand on. I am thinking I might do a whole mini grimoire on planetary magic. We shall see. And another one that you may have seen on Insta. This was actually as part of Normal Clan's uh, Patreon. That's Vanessa. Um, she is was working, she works through these sort of archetypes each month. And this one was the Mystic Sovereign. <sighs> Had to be Queen Stevie. Who doesn't love Queen Stevie? And I like this image of her because it is a more recent image. We constantly see these old images of her. And I like the fact that this is 
a more recent image of her as an older person, which um, should still be celebrated. I think that's something that, as someone who is getting older myself, uh, we, particularly with our women, tend to want to close the door on them and pretend they don't exist because they no longer have value in our society because they can no longer breed or they're no longer beautiful. Yes, that's cynical and no, that is not across the board, but it pisses me off. Um, it is one of the worst parts of our misogynist society. So uh, that was my reason for choosing this particular image of, of Stephen X. And this is the just a little collage in the back of my book and some these are little there's cards and envelopes and things from other witches who have sent me things in the post. I, I, I like to keep everything. I like to keep the little thank you cards. I like to keep the pretty envelopes people use. Um, and so I will often just tuck them into uh some pocket somewhere in my book of shadows a little bit more studio ghibli washi tape and studio and this is <laughs> i love the totoro anyway so a uh, little bit of witchiness coming along here that is it that is book 19 um and as you can see it is not as big as some of my previous books we are definitely shrinking down so that we can add more substance to the pages. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's inspired you in some way. Um, let me know if any of these ideas spark something in you. Always want to hear about what you're up to. So, yeah comment down below, tag me on Instagram on any of your creations. I'd love to see them um, and chat to you soon. Much love, my lovely art witches and make art magic.